essentially augmented reality. Who knows what is augmented reality? Everybody knows? Oh, only two people. Good. Otherwise, I could have walked out of the room. Okay, so basically, it's the ability to overlay virtual information on top of real information. Basic type of augmented reality, the one you see in the kind of wikitude types of application, is GPS plus location, uh, plus uh, direction based. So GPS plus compass gives you a location and a direction. Based on that, you query a database and you can overlay information as to what is surrounding you in kind of, uh, um, how to say, uh, perspective mode. So you can have a feeling of depth. Good thing, you can capture things that are outside of your field of view because uh, essentially uh, you are, um, you can see on the radar, for example, all the things that are around, you can turn in a, di uh, in a direction. A bad thing, it doesn't work indoor because there is no GPS indoor. Next, visual-based augmented reality, on the other hand, is much more interesting. It's the ability to overlay virtual information again on top of real information, but this time using recognition, image recognition of what you see in the field of view and overlaying data that is relevant. So, for example, in um, location-based uh, augmented reality, you are reliant on a database. If you're pointing to a direction where there is a McDonald's and you walk in that direction to go find it and it happens that uh, the database is not up to date, you might end up in a KFC or in a big Burger King or whatever. Here, it has to recognize the information it sees in order to provide you with the augmented reality experience. So how does it do it? Basically, the first thing it does is that it recognizes the scene. It recognizes pieces of the scene and based on that, it will essentially match what it sees with what it knows. And this is where comes the concept of a target. A target is something that the augmented reality application can recognize. So it matches it with the database. Once it identifies it, it will basically lock into it. So for example, it's going to recognize the Cheerio box. By locking into it, it will identify both the positions of the object. Let's say this is the object, right? So it will identify its position with respect to the object and the, your position with respect to the object, the position of your device, your phone or your iPad with respect to the object. What this gives you, uh, any engineer in the room? A couple, okay. Uh, people might remember the six degrees of freedom. Position, essentially identify exactly your position and you, where you're looking at in terms of... Uh, of a device. Now what this brings you is a very intuitive UI. You want to zoom? You don't have to pinch or you just go close. You want to pan? You go around it. You want to go down? You go down it. You're going to see it by yourself. So this is basically the position and orientation. And that it does, once it does that, it will represent an object. It will represent very often a 3D asset because this is the most wow effect, but it could be a video being played, it could be an audio file, it could be anything in that context. Now, this, in order for this to be smooth, it has to run basically about scanning, <coughs> comparing, positioning, and rendering 30 times per second. So that this is the level of performance that is required from the toolkit, and this is why the toolkit is, is, uh, is quite sophisticated. So, as an example, you have a magazine, and we're going to see real-life examples. This is not uh, futuristic uh, uh, science fiction stuff. A magazine, you point your phone to the magazine, and then you can pick the color of the jeans. And by picking the color of the jeans, just by clicking on your device itself, you can change the color, you can turn the person, you can zoom in on an area that is of interest to you, because you like pockets and jeans, I'm sure. Now, the second thing is really about another example, which is augmented reality, and this is a true thing, on 3D objects. Uh, this was demonstrated at CES. It is how can you make a child play, for example. So a child will play with objects. So which ones were in the keynote? Not many, great, because this was in the keynote, so you didn't miss it. So essentially, a, pla a child plays with objects, right? He positions the objects and he events in the imaginary world. Well, Sesame Street has explored a different way to enhance the imaginary world of a child. 
And they do this, I hope it's gonna work, it's a demo, you know. It, they do this, this way. So essentially you have still the same characters, the same toys that you can play with. You can put them on the mat, the same way you do it, but with a tablet now, you can see a, an imaginary world around it. And they can interact themselves with your imaginary world. So they can, the, the, his imaginary world is enhanced with the augmented reality. Not only can the objects be animated, but new objects can be brought to life, like it is the case here. So this is an example of augmented reality again. The kind of areas where augmented reality is being used is mostly games. This is the first area where we're seeing it. Advertisement, advertisement is big. Brands are loving it. Instructional videos uh, as well, it's very useful when you want to bring things to life, when you want to bring people to interact with objects. Uh, these are the kind of brands who are using augmented reality today. And the reason they are using augmented reality is because it brings traction. Blipper, um, tell us, what is the, uh, the, the conversion rate? Conversion rate is versus traditional uh, advertising where you spray and pray, that is you pass a message, you put it on a billboard and you hope that people are going to see it. Conversion is the ability to translate that message into something actionable by the person who sees the advertisement. What's your uh, conversion rate? We saw, for example, we made a livable magazine that's all of the augmented reality, and we saw about nearly 20% of the readership um, using augmented reality for, which means that 20% of the, which means that 20% of the people who read that magazine actually went onto their online website, and converted to their online website, or for example. For purchasing, when you blip something, we're seeing around a 30% conversion rate from people who look at it to people who go for online content. Thank you very much. So this is Omar from Blipper. Uh, it, where do you see it in brands? You see it at the point of advertisement, at the point of sale, and at the point of use. So where it's being advertised, where you are seeing it on the shelf, and when you have the actual product at home. So it is a very strong uh, concept. Now, Euphoria is Qualcomm's augmented reality kit. It is optimized in terms for mobile platforms. It works on any ARM v6 with GPU, but it works better on Qualcomm platforms. Why? Because there is calibration that is involved. Calibration both in terms of the camera, every camera on every phone is different, and it has implications at the level of the robustness of the recognition, and also at the level of the optimization of the rendering. So all of this is optimized for our platforms, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't work on non-Qualcomm platform. I was able to make it run on many different platforms. Actually, it runs on an iOS uh, phone as well. So what we see today is a huge traction for this SDK. We have more than 24,000 developers, more than 400 apps in the marketplace, and uh, basically it runs on about 400 models of phones and these are the ones they are tested against. This is the kind of recognition you see, this is the kind of articles you see in the press about the Vuforia kit. You want to try it, you go to developer.qualcom.com slash AR and you will be able to download it. The kit is available for Android, for iOS and for Unity. And this will allow you to build augmented reality applications. Uh, the kind of usage you use it for is near-field usage mostly. That is, you need to have an object that you are close to to recognize or that is uh, big enough in shape so that it can be recognized at a distance. So it can be a table mat, it can, for example, like in a restaurant, a menu in a restaurant. It can be a poster, uh, like the poster of, um, uh, for example, a movie. So let's take an example here. Let's stop talking and start playing. Who likes to play? Rami, do you have the magazine with you? Yeah. Okay, why don't you bring it over? And then we'll start playing with that. So the kind of targets you can recognize are image targets, frame markers, or even simple 3D objects. The virtual buttons are buttons that you can bring on the target itself. So this, for example, is a target. If you put the camera on top of it with the right application, you will see a Ferrari. If you press with your finger on the target itself, not on your phone, then you can change the color of the Ferrari. These are called virtual buttons, okay? So just to explain the concept. 
Virtual buttons are feasible and essentially what you have is a device SDK. We have online tools. The online tools bring the target management system and you have community forum. All of that is under the developer.qualcom.com slash AR, okay? Now, how is the kit built, essentially? What is the kit? How and how does your application work with it? This is your application. It will query a state object, the state of the virtual, the, the, re, the world it sees through the camera. You can update your application logic based on that. Think of it like pressing a button on an application. And you can render graphics based on what you want to show out of it. Now, this is the whole SDK. It looks big here, but in actual uh, size, it's much smaller than uh, your application. The reason it shows big here is so that we can go through the detail. The first application here is really to turn on and off the camera and to replace the actual, what the camera sees in your phone with something that it can process. The first thing it's going to do is convert the image in a way it can be processed by OpenGL. So for example, for RGB 565 into another format and also have different types of information because it needs, it needs it in grayscale, because it relies on the contrast that is in the image. It needs it in different formats so that it can display it as well. Then the, the core of the kit is really the tracker. The tracker recognizes the different types of objects, the image tracker, the frame marker, the multi-image target, you can have multiple targets recognized at the same time, and the virtual buttons that we just talked about. It will detect the object, it will track the detected objects, and evaluate the virtual buttons. Tracking the objects means I see the object has moved, I might need to move my 3D asset with it. What this does is update the state object. And this is where all the information re relies, uh, resides. Sorry. And that state object then is being used by your application to update the logic. So for example, let's say this is a poster, poster for a movie. So I'm going to do now, I hope it's going to work. It's a demo. I'm going to take this thing here, right? And I'm going to unplug this. Forgive me, Russia, for doing this. Okay. So I don't have much light. I hope light is a bit of importance here. So why don't you why don't you hold this for a sec? And now let's see if this this works. Amazing. Why does Apple stuff work? <laughs> okay. So this is done two. Done two is essentially an application. Okay, it shows a bit tilted here, right? But it's an application that uh, relates to the Danto movie. This is the poster for the movie. You can show it to the people. Now, if you press, if you tap to scan, this is your camera view, right? You see yourself, guys? Right? Okay. Well, you don't see yourselves anymore. Okay. Let me start again. Small glitch. Okay. So now, I'm going to put it towards the poster. And guess what? It sees the poster. It plays the trailer of the movie. Okay? So what? No, now it's done. It depends on the application. The only thing that was in this application is if you see that target, play that trailer. That's it. It's easy, not difficult to build. Okay? So since I have this thing here, I might as well show you different types of application. Um, let's say I'm browsing a magazine. Right, and in this magazine, I have not only the Dawn 2 poster that happens to be there, but I have also an advertisement for the latest Mercedes Class C. Do I see anything here? I don't. Why? Because my Mercedes is somewhere here. Uh, well, sorry. Uh, what did I do? Okay. There. So I click on that application, and then what I'm going to have, it's a Mercedes-Benz advertisement for a C-Class Mercedes spot. So thank you. You don't always have to have a pretty girl to carry your application, but it helps. <laughs> so what you do is you just start the application, and again, you guys can see yourself. Now I point my application, and oh, here is my Class C Mercedes. No? Lost. Uh -huh. Apples don't always work. Uh, OK. 
Okay, so we're starting again. Maybe it's here. Okay, it's working again. Yes, it's working again. This is the camera. So does it recognize another target? No, it doesn't recognize any of these targets, but it does recognize the advertisement in the magazine. And you know what? It's nice because I can really go around the target and I can go zoom in on the pieces that are interesting to me, etc. So this is the kind of stuff you can do with augmented reality. Now, the other thing that is interesting as well is that, okay, here you have to download an app for everything that you do, right? You had a Mercedes app, you had a, uh, another app. No, how do you go about doing it for anything that you see, any kind of billboard application? So you can build what is called some kind of an AR browser. And this is what Blippard did. They developed this thing. Uh, there are other companies that have developed it as well. But we like Blippard. We invested in them. So essentially, we are going to now look at what Blippard does. Uh, and actually, it's, you know, if you go to the UK, Rami was in the UK in London. If you walk in London, you can hardly pass by an advertisement without seeing a Blippar advertisement there. So these are essentially Blippar based advertisements. These are live advertisements. Yeah, Omar? Okay. So you want to see an Omega watch. Uh, then basically, with the same app, you point to the Omega watch and whoo, this is your watch. Okay. I don't know, can you change the watch? You can turn it, I guess. But can you change that watch? No, but you do have, you do have, um, you do have information that is available, like where is the nearest store? Tick. Okay, sure. Now, cars, I know you guys love cars. So this is another one. This is a car again. Okay, advertisement of cars. Okay, now let's do something else. Let's do tomato ketchup. This I'll Microsoft have to connection doesn't like the application. The Microsoft connection. It's a Microsoft cable. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. My phone is a Microsoft phone. Okay, so don't, don't get me in, but in trouble with Microsoft. It's a Windows phone. Okay. <laughs> so... We can show you all of this stuff later on. I think you can play with it. You can experiment it yourself. Maybe I need to turn off the application, turn it down again. No, no, it's just... Uh, it's just loose? Yeah, it's just loose. Okay. Okay, well... No? No. Well, let's keep it, keep it there. Let me try it again. Uh, no input. This thing really doesn't like augmented reality. Oh, here, there. Yeah, it so, do you want me to hold it for you? Huh? Sure. Tomato ketchup. See, you not get a pretty girl to hold it for you as well. Not only just to hold the picture, but also the cable. The hands, and then. It's not working. Now listen up, dearies. You can have audio, etc. So sorry about this. Um, right. Maybe it's not working because of this here. Here, we're getting there. Okay. So there you have all the details about the stuff. We did the car. What is it that we didn't do yet? Uh, Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic Park. Whoa, I'm afraid. How about some songs? Okay, there we go. Can I the Sorry? Yes. In this application, you have to click on the screen because the application is a bit like this. But you could, with a kit, run on the, uh, on the you can click on the virtual buttons. There is no thing that, for, uh, for example, you can imagine that you have the mat of a restaurant and you click on an item in the menu and that will give you the information for that item, for example, okay? So this is how the AR kit works in a, sh in a, in a nutshell. I don't want to go much more in details into this. Um, how about, how do you create these targets? These targets, right, need to be created. They need to be recognized by the solution. You go through the target management system. All of this is free, by the way, right? So what you do is that you take the target, you select the target type, 
You put it there, you just have to indicate the width of the, uh, the target, I think it's in millimeters, and it will calculate the height. You have to upload your image, and it gives you, in your own space, your set of images with the latest ones you've downloaded. Now, it gives you a rating. The rating next to the image is really how good is the image in terms of recognition. If you get one star, it doesn't mean that the image cannot be recognized. It might be more difficult to track, but it is still recognizable. Okay, so don't, don't get uh, completely disappointed if you just get one star. Smooth surfaces will generate much less um, uh, stars than uh, surfaces with details. So, for example, if I have this, I will generate zero star and it won't recognize it. If I have a circle here, it will not recognize it because the circle is completely symmetrical. So, how can I really have my target move around that, right? Now, however, if I have this, then what do I have? I have contrast, I have distributed contrast in the image, and I have corners. This is very good for recognition. And we can show you some applications later on. Uh, this is basically an advertisement for boots in Norway, and you can zap and choose the boots that you want with that thing. Uh, sorry, if you have a square? Yes. Also, it's not uh, Square by itself, I think, is a bit weak. But you can have, you can have things on the square that makes it recognizable. Um, if you have a 3D object, you can still go through the tracking management system. You just have to indicate the three faces of the 3D object that you want to see recognized. Now, once you have these targets, they basically fit into an XML file. And this is where the, your targets sit, right? Once you have these targets, essentially then the tracker can detect these targets and update the state object on that basis. And the state object is really a structure where you have the current image in RGB, YUV, and grayscale. You have the list of active trackable objects that you have in your application, and the events, the events being mostly the virtual buttons. Now, if you want to create an Android app, you have different ways to go. First one is you can use the Android or iOS sample apps that are in the kit with the Android and iOS SDKs that are available over developer.qualcom.com. AR. And uh, basically, uh, you, can, uh, you can modify the sample app or you can build your own app with the SDK. Modifying the sample app is the easiest way. It's like taking the Hello World program and say, you know what, I'm going to change world and put Jill. Who didn't do that when they, were, they started C? They changed Hello and they put something else. Okay, so it's exactly the same thing. What you have is a Java, a Java this is your Android environment, your Java code sits in Java. Your native code is needed for the performance, and you have the native C++. What you need to do is first initialize the SDK, then you have to start the trackers. After that, you basically, starting the trackers will start, will make the calls to the SDKs. After that, you handle the tracker updates, and once this is done, basically, you close the SDK. So suppose you want to change this sample app that you just have to compile and run out of the SDK that is available on the website. Right? When you download the SDK, the sample app is there. And you want to do something like done to, right? But maybe instead of having to incorporate the video object, you just want to point to a URL. So what you would do is use exactly the same environment. So here you kill the when you close the SDK, you deinitialize the SDK. It's exactly the same thing. You have your Java and your native C code, you have to initialize it. You have to start the trackers. You have to handle the tracker updates. Now, the, the trick is, once you try hold, you have the Java that needs to send the messages to the native C++, and vice versa. The native C++ needs to tell the Java, now I want you to do something with that. I want you to go to a URL. And this is where you pass a message, and then you build, you override, essentially. You just override the method that you have in the sample application. Right? To do what? To provide a new intent. The intent is to go do a URL parse, and you can parse whatever video you want in that URL. That's it. It's that simple. You can go and play with the SDK. What, I'm, what I've said is just the ABC or BABA of things. You can find much more uh, interesting details in the, um, on the, on the uh, forums. All you can ask questions. You can get help. Uh, everyone gets help through the forum. They are basically, this is the way to go, right? 
and all the, all the new information comes from the forum. So you are not going to be less advantaged than anybody else by just using the forum. Okay? I think that was it. Any questions? Please. Yes. It can. Absolutely. Uh, I okay. actually asked Rami to put pictures on his uh, playbook so that it could recognize them because we didn't have time to print them out. Okay. Uh, one more question is, uh, do all, like, what is the added value of using Euphoria versus, I don't know if, there's, if there are libraries out there that utilize the camera to be able to do this, but do you guys, for example, do hardware acceleration to be able to do that or hardware optimization? I mean, what's the added value? Absolutely. So this is a very good question. Uh, Vuforia is an SDK. There are many other SDKs that are available out there. The difference is that Vuforia is optimized, right, for the calibration and for the mobile platform. The other SDKs are not necessarily optimized. By calibration, I mean when you take a phone, each one of these phones has a different camera. Each one of these cameras has different characteristics. There is something called vignetting, which are basically the four corners. Remember the old uh, cameras that you had? They had dark corners. This is because of vignetting. The lens brings a shade on the side. Usually, the algorithm will boost it up. But vignetting, distortion, can bring issues in terms of the robustness of the recognition. The other, uh, the other aspect is also the, the optimization of the rendering itself. When you want the, the value of augmented reality is to enhance the end user experience, bottom line, right? It's a simple thing. If you don't get that enhancement, then your augmented reality is not great. It's re you are really dependent on that optimization. And this is what the Vuforia kit brings. Now, does it work on all phones? Yes, it does. It works better on the Qualcomm phones. And quite frankly, I mean, Qualcomm phones are in many, many of the Android platforms. They are in um, all the Windows platform. Uh, not that Windows is supported today. And uh, you have the kit running on iOS. You can try it yourself. It's work, it works perfectly on that platform. If the platform is good enough, has enough power and optimization, and it has been optimized for iOS, by the way, then the, the kit is good. But you feel free to experiment with other kits. The other thing that is interesting is that you can use tools like Unity 3D to build an application very quickly. The value of building it with Unity 3D is basically you have all of the 3D assets, all of the scripting, anything that you do in normal gaming uh, building. You have physics engines that you can reuse if you have to have a ball that bounces, etc. You can do all of that with, with Unity, right? Uh, the disadvantage that you might get is that you will have to program through Unity. That is, Unity will generate the code for you. So all of your application logic will go through the scripting, which is not a bad thing, but it's a different thing than if you take a, uh, an Android environment and you try to build an Android application. Okay? And soon you will have other methods to build applications uh, that use augmented reality and to build assets that can be recognized on top of targets. You provide the assets, you provide the targets, and it can recognize it for you. Blipper is working on things like that. Uh, is it possible to uh, detect abstract objects, such as cars or chairs? Would Absolutely. That Would that be predefined? No, no, no. You don't have to have a, a, a predefined object. Yes. I mean, uh, if, if, if it's any chair, it will detect it as a no, chair. No, it's not, it's not an intelligent uh, thing. It recognizes the target. That is, it matches something it sees with something it has learned to recognize. Okay. If it is not the same chair, it will not recognize it. And, and hopefully, I hope it is the case, because I wouldn't want, if I'm Omega, to have a Brickling uh, show up on my, uh, on my advertisement, for example. Sorry, I'm, I'm not a technical person, so my question is going to sound maybe very basic to most people here. But just for me to understand, this is basically an application that you download onto your phone, uh, which goes to the camera, which adapts to whichever camera your phone has. This is why you said it's... Uh, it's not an application. It is a kit that helps you when you build an application okay. that brings a, a functionality to your application. But the logic of the application remains yours. Okay. You can do whatever you want with it. 
Now, if all what you want to do is just to put a 3D object on top of a target, then you can do this in five minutes with Unity. It will generate the code for you and it's done, right? Okay. If you have some logic that is inherent to your application, say your application is about, uh, you have today a list menu for a restaurant. Let's take the restaurant example again. So you have uh, all the different kind of burgers, sure. right? So in your application today, you have to click on the first one or click on the second one or click on the third one to get more information there. This could be a mall map, for example, for all that purpose. It doesn't need to be a, a restaurant map, right? Then instead of clicking, you can point to the object of interest that represents what you are clicking on, and then you can get, it will recognize it and get the information. So then you have added augmented reality to your existing application. Okay? And, and do you put, you can design and put several things on, a, on one platform so that the user can check several things on... Uh it, is a, it is correct. You can recognize multiple different objects with exactly the same toolkit in the same application. It can carry, I think, around 100 targets in the application itself. Before it starts, you can, might get a performance degrade, degrading, uh, um, well, a performance degrade, let's say. Okay. And this is on the initial kit. The, second ver the new version of the SDK that came out, the 1.5 version, allows you to um, basically swap sets swap data sets. So for example, if you have a newspaper, right? Many newspapers always have on the front page a picture of uh, something, but they are printed at like 1 a.m. and by 7 a.m. when you read the newspaper, often the information has changed. Sure. How about you can just point your phone to that thing and get the latest, just by pointing to a URL, like we saw the example, and you get the latest video, not only still, but video about the current event that is being depicted in the newspaper. Now, you don't want to have to download a new application every day to sure. do this. So mm -hmm. the logic remains the same. It is the same application. What happens is that the application will go fetch the new target, the, latest the new image, and the new asset, the new video URL, every day, so when you open your application, it checks, is it a new day? Yes, it goes fetch it, and you can use it. It's transparent. And last question, is this something that is selected by the user, him or herself? I mean, does the user of the, uh, the phone owner, are they the person that determines what it is that they want to, to scan via augmented reality? Or is it somebody like Blipar that would program uh you as a as a brand or as a publisher decide what you want as a target now there are applications that allow the end user to define it themselves right but if you define it yourself then basically you you i mean there's a business model behind it right you want it to be used for for a given uh, like uh, in an advertisement, etc. You own that target and you very often also own the asset that is associated with that target. For example, in this example, I'm, I'm just finishing here, Omega. I suppose that essentially Omega not only owns the rights to the target, but also they own the right to the 3D asset you saw when we displayed it on top of it. They give you the 3D asset and you can display it this way. Okay? So very often, even you can do it. There are applications that allow end users to do it. The level of recognition is not as good because the processing that you can have on the platform to recognize object is not always as uh, on the fly, that is, or a new object and, and, and generate uh, the signature for it so that you can just point to it again, is not always as good as um, if you had it on a system like the, the trackable management system because uh, the level of, of complexity that is required to identify what are called the, the local invariants on the image, the points that do not change, and that will allow you essentially to see it in, in different ways. Great, time's up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Gilles. That was great. <laughs>